I, I got there to come for visiting. Yeah, I came to come for visit to see how the UK was before going back and coming for my postgraduate program. Only for me two days before my departure, the whole system was like my ticket was cancelled. I had started looking for tickets. Every ticket was expensive. Decided, okay, instead of going back and sending the money for tickets and going back, let me just wait. Still, I see as my visa was still, not knowing it was going to take this long before I changed over to the city and because I had the plan to study. I started in the September of the year, went with the program. It was challenging, studying from home, brief lectures in class, the others were online. And the interesting thing was I just um, speaking, one day I just decided, okay, some of these lecturers that I was close with, let me reach out to him. The interesting thing is the lecturer was not a Nigerian, he's an Asian. I just reached out to him that, okay, he was teaching us project management. Sorry, bear with me for my stories. I'm doing somewhere. He said I should come and share story and I'm a storyteller. Yeah, so as I said, I reached out to him and the first question he asked me was, is there a Nigerian society in my school? I said, no. He said, okay, your first assignment is go and start one. I said, okay, I went, started during the pandemic, looked at the requirements, reached out to them. They told me I needed about 20 signatories. I tried looking for, and then we hardly see ourselves because it was pandemic. That was around November, December period of 2020. To cut the long story short, I went back to him that I've tried, but I couldn't get 20 Nigerians. So he said, did they say it must be Nigerians? I said in the form, he didn't say Nigerians. He just said 20 signatories. He said, just go and look for people that are committed. I said, okay, if he says so. And if anything happens, I'll come back and, in my mind, I'll come back and tell you that you were the one that told me this. So I went, started anyone I meet online, physically, in person. I was just telling them. First of all, the society started with the challenges, and that was how the journey started. And looking back, I've come to discover that because of some of the experiences I have faced, because I've been able to experience some of these things, it has made me able to resolve people's issues. Because I've been through some of the situations, is it not being able to pay school fees? So when people come and tell me, my program was delayed for some months or frozen because I couldn't pay. So when people come to tell me, I'm able to guide them. So it's not a palatable experience, but because I was able to go through those experiences, it has helped me, shaping me better. And because of this thing, uh, part of the vision of the societies is to give us that platform because the truth be told, we're not brought up. Looking at the culture of Africans and the culture of the Europeans or the Asians, they were brought up to love each other, but we were brought up to stand alone. Some of us came from polygamous backgrounds. Some of us came from so many of those things. So coming here, I had to learn some things. I had to unlearn some things. I had to relearn some things. Like I was someone that don't like talking. And in the UK, if you don't talk, you're on your own. Yes, you are all spiritual. These people, if they ask, how are you? If you tell them you are fine. They take you for that, you are fine, and they go. But you hear these people say, oh, I'm having this kind of challenge. So at that point, it will make people know how to face, but sometimes we, is it, I, would, I won't call it packaging. We tend to want to show that everything. Yeah, some of us might have had some experiences with some people that might have been bad, some has been awed by some Africans or some, but still that doesn't stop us from still reaching out for help. Some might take it the right way to help you, 
and carry your matter for it. Some will just end it. But the idea of starting the society was to reach out and see how to make students that are coming in because most people that came to the country came through students except some few. Let's say over 60% of Nigerians or Africans that came to the country came in through the study route. So we are, the idea of the society is to assist students to be able to transition and settle down properly. So we might not be able to give you millions, we might not be able to, but we might be able to give you ideas that might be able to make you, which is much, much better. I read a post recently and it said, if they asked you to choose between 10 million pounds and 10 million followers or 10 million network, which will you go for? And for me, my own is I'll go for this, or even 1,000 um, people of network. I'll go for the 1,000 network because by networking with those people, please, or the host, please just remind me of, and give me some reminder so that I can keep talking. <laughs> yeah, so sorry, but so, um, like I said, so those are part of the experiences. Networking is something that you don't joke with. Okay, let me give you. It's easy to go applying for jobs, for accommodations, for this, but it's much, much better if you are recommended. Some of us from Africa, uh, we enjoyed so many benefits from our parents because they were members of either Ikoi Club, Lion Club, this club or that club, this, wherever they may be. And we come here, everyone is forming. We need each other. Just one recommendation from someone can help you. Let me give you a short scenario. I joined the Rotary Club here in Essex and why the, the, the current, the coordinator then at that time was the, an African person, I think from Ghana or from Kenya or somewhere. So we just blended because we are all from the same uh, African community. He drops me home from where we have our meetings and we chat. So one of the days while driving, he was asking me what do I do? I said, I'm in the care and I'm looking for more opportunities. And he said, okay. The next thing I got was, I got a link that I should apply on this website and we still keep. So I just went, I sent my CV and he reached out to me that what CV did I send that I need to update my CV? That's where learning and unlearning comes. I said, okay. I just went back that day and they gave me a deadline that I must submit before this time. I went again. I just did some uh, fire brigade approach to, what, to do the CV. I okay. sent it back. And it reached out to me that if not because of the relationship he and the person had, we happen to be my present and uh, my current person that uh, I need to work on it. I said at this time down, this guy they carry my matter past me, said that if the job is coming, if it's not coming, let him just hold himself. Let the job hold itself. I was already getting I said, Do you know what? You do me a favor. Now I am not going further. Send me I will send my CV to you. If you don't approve it, then I'm not sending it. Do you know this person literally sent me his own CV as a template? I used it to work on my own, sent it to him to, to look at it. He did this correction, I sent it back to him. When he approved it, I sent the CV to the company and the others is history. Why? Because of networking. Some of us, we feel meeting Andrew. We might not benefit anything from Andrew today. It might be later, later, later. 
you might, most of us because of Africa we're raised that okay when I meet uh, you have okay. like three more minutes please all right I don't worry I'm rounding up with this one thank you okay. I know I'm already getting boring to all of you don't worry I'm rounding up all right so like I said I most of us when we meet someone the average African will be let me just tell him all my problems and you'll solve it no we don't learn how to maintain relationship sometimes just send him ah i just wish to which i'm also learning i just feel to check up the more you relate the more you build up network it's just like when you are having a friend you don't start with uh, telling the person your needs everyone will start with packaging themselves will start bringing it out then with time when you guys know yourself you know when there's anything the next thing that comes to your mind is, okay, this person, we need to learn on how to maintain relationship or network. It's one thing to build network, but one thing we fail to do is to maintain that network. For instance, Bill Gates, no matter how busy he is, uh, Bishop Oyedepo, uh, all these busy men, Bill Gates, uh, Stephen Jobs, and the rest, there are some people that will call them at 2 a.m. and they'll still pick. There are some people, no matter how busy Andrew is, there are some people that will call him by 2 a.m. and he will still respond to why because of the network relationship. And there are some people that cannot reach out to those people, not because they don't know them, but because they don't maintain the relationship. And maintaining the relationship, don't worry, I'm rounding up. God help me. Maintaining the relationship doesn't mean you going there to disturb them for what you need. But it's so that tomorrow, say for instance, uh, I caught up and I met Andrew, he's having his conglomerate in the nearest future. And I go there, I'm not able to reach out to Andrew. And I get to his uh, office, his, uh, his front desk, and they said, ah, he's in a meeting. I'll just, what do I do? Because I still maintain relationship, I'll just pick up my phone. Uh, Andrew, you don't become big man, so we can't see you again. But if not, uh, I will be at the mercy of the front desk or the situation that you can enter. Thank you so much. And thank you for listening to all my, I hope it makes sense. Oh, I dropped yeah. my mic. Thanks, thanks, thanks for that. If there is one major thing I picked up, it's maintaining any good network we have. Thank you. <clears throat> all right, the next thing is, we'll be having Mr. We'll be having online cast, sorry, for putting me start. But we'll be having online customers, Aruku Dade. The name is, the person is a trainer, consultant, and founder, Black Women in Care. Might be a female. So it's as if you've seen some of my notes. I know my time is counting down. I know that Mr. Yeah, Andrew does 15 minutes with us. 15 minutes, okay. Yeah. That is fine. I should be able to. Um, it's been recorded in any way. So if there is any bits that people do not understand, then you have uh, you have access to the recordings. So you can go through later any question to ask, then you could ask me any questions if you want to. Um, so I've teamed this, I hope everyone can see me, I've teamed this new year, new here, what next? Um, as you know, John has previously shared his experience as a student, uh, sometimes some of the expectations that we have, uh, you know, back home, we're expecting people to support, or maybe you probably have an uncle here or a sister here, and you're wondering, oh, why are they not helping? What is going on? Yes, yes so there is a there is a sh culture shock um, in this country. So it's new year, new here, and what next? So that's what I've titled it. I'm just going to reduce the slide so everyone can see it. So uh, about myself, my name is Olainka. My name is Olainka Thomas Arogundade. And I also came into this country as a student. Um, it's been 13 years now. It's going to be 13 years in May. Uh, when I came into this country, there were lots and loads of culture, culture shock. 
Um, I was, I would say I was lucky and I was, I, I, would, I don't like to use the word lucky. I prefer to use the word blessed. I was blessed that my mom was as, is already in this country. So I didn't really have um, much issue with accommodation, but I was culture shock. Um, the school that I went to, um, all the process and everything, it was like a new thing to me. Um, when I started, I started, you know, uh, the job I could get at that moment in time was a, as a carer, care assistant. So I did care assistance. So, but at some point, it was interfering with my education. So I had to choose between, you know, facing my studies or working. And because I had the support from my mom then, it was easy for me to leave my job for a while and to just focus on my education. But even though it was my mom, it got to some point like, because when people come here, there are lots of opportunities to work that I could support her in a way. So even, even with my mom, she got to some point, she got at some point, she was, she was tired. She was like, okay, at this point, you need to find something to do. You need to work. So I thought, okay, because I was still studying, what can I do next? And that's when I found a, a cleaning work. So I started working as a cleaner early in the morning. So I would leave, I have to start working by six. I need to finish by nine, before nine, because it was an office. So people are gonna be using the office by 9 a.m. So I have to finish at least quarter to nine because even some people come to work at 8.30. So I have to finish work at that time. So I did this, uh, I did cleaning job um, for, for some time. Uh, in order for me to be able to focus on my education and just to think about what do I want to do next. Um, so this was many years back, about 10 years now. After I finished my education, I went back into, um, after I finished my education, I, I started working at a college as a receptionist. Um, so this was the college that I've been to myself. So I started working as a receptionist. Later on, I went back into a care job when I was, I was looking for a graduate job. I couldn't find something at that time. So I went back into care work. And so after my graduation, did my graduation uh, ceremony. So I started looking for what to do again. Um, then later on I said, okay, I do have experience in, in care already. Let me explore what you know I could find within the health and social care that I can you know, utilize my skills and my experience. So that's when I started, you know, digging into earth and social care and I found that there are a lot of opportunities for me there. So I started working within the health and social care. So I've got a job with an agency as a care coordinator, care co, and I became the registered manager. And currently I'm working, so many, many years after, um, so currently I'm working as a consultant supporting people to establish their own care businesses and even supporting um, care owners with their staff development. So that's just a brief about me. I'm not going to um, bore you with my story. So I, I've seen this also studies and PDFA. And PDFA means a personal development and future ambition. So now um, you're currently studying now, you're probably doing a postgraduate. Some people are doing PhD. Some people might be undergraduate. So what is the way forward? Where do you go from here? I, like, as I said, I had the opportunity of my mom being here but also I would like to speak about the possible challenges you might be facing now. One, you, you know, you probably facing a um, living cost. So when we, you know, definitely living cost has increased significantly for the, in the last two years or one year or so. Um, so that means housing is expensive if you can even get one in the location that is closer to your school. So maybe that might be one of the possible challenges you're facing. The other thing, you might be homesick. Um, you know, people are complaining, oh, it's so lo lonely here. I wish I was with my family, I was with this. And sometimes it's culture shock, things that you probably thought, okay, people eating on the street, for example, you're probably thinking, is, are they okay? Why would someone be eating on the train? Um, I thought of that when I came into this country. So what I would advise, John has already mentioned some of this, is join university, your university um, shushu club, like Aruna that we are in now, you need to be part of a shushu club. Honestly, if you want to grow, you need to be part of a shushu club. And it's okay not to be okay um, for a short period of time. It's okay to face the challenges now. It's okay if you have to worry. Many times I cried. Even when I got the cleaning job that I did then, I was really excited because it was at a point in my life that I just needed to get a job. 
imagine someone over the age of 18, over the age of 20, and you're still living under your, your parents, you're probably waiting for my mom to give you this and that because you couldn't walk. So I was so desperate. So it's okay not to be okay. It's okay to do the job that you have right now because you know that that is not the end of you. You're going somewhere. So don't worry about your accent. I remember when I came here, I, my cousins are here. So I had a lot of cousins. So whenever we go out together, they always know me by them. My accent, they will know me. So whenever I speak, it's okay. You are from, you're not from here. I said, they'll call me Freshie. Freshie said, they called me Freshie then. They will say, oh, she's a Freshie. As soon as I speak my accent. But the only thing is that my English are correct. So as, as long as your grammars are correct, don't worry about the accent. The accent might come later, they might not come. But that is not the, the most important thing. So people might call you fresh now, but don't worry about your accent. And if you're homesick, so please do surround yourself like a community that we are in. I also have a community myself that's called Black Women in Care, the support people that are working within the health and social care. So please find a community for yourself. Be part of that community. Volunteer your time as well, because it will definitely help you on uh, your journey. So um, if you're currently studying, uh, a postgraduate. So just uh, some of the opportunities that, you know, that is available as a postgraduate student. Like I said, when I was working, when I was in the college, I went back to be a receptionist. You can also find like a receptionist job. If, you are, if you're studying for a postgraduate or PhD degree, you could even apply for a part-time teaching job within your university. So for example, if you have your first degree in business, all you need to, to have is to have a level three award in teaching. Level three award in teaching, you could get that within two months. If you focus on it, you could get that certificate within two months and you can start working almost immediately. There are a lot of colleges. You know, college is different from university. There are a lot of colleges that are looking for part-time, maybe business um, teachers, for example, if you're marketing. So if you have a first degree in marketing, you could be uh, a teacher or a lecturer in a college in marketing. Sorry, I um, can hear some uh, background noise. So you could be, you could be, uh, you know, a teacher in marketing. So whatever your first degree is, or even if you're currently studying right now, so maybe you're in a third year in, in university, you can teach a level two or level three jobs, and which will help you because that's what you know. Maybe that's what you're aspiring to become in the future. So it depends on what you're doing. Care assistance as well. Um, you could also get a job as a tutor. We also have what we call the assessor. You could also get a job as an assessor to assess portfolios of apprenticeship or people that are doing the level two or level three courses. So depending on your first degree, you can utilize that right now um, to, you know, to get a lot of job opportunities as well. So current opportunities, because I, I've worked within the health and social care, please uh, let me know if, if I have about five minutes left. So I yeah, work within the health exactly. and social care. Five minutes to go. Five minutes to go, okay. I work within the health and social care. And as of December, 2022, there are 1 million, over 1 million, which is, a, that, that's, this is job vacancy within the health and social care. So as of December, 2022, over 1 million job vacancies. And within the, Within the NHS, there are over 350 jobs. I hear some people say that postgraduate within public health, this is a time for you to explore that area. And as I said, don't, don't think about um, getting a role um, and maybe you're looking for a project manager role at the moment, or you're looking for um, that t t job title at the moment. No, just get into NHS however you can, even if as a cleaner, if you can get into NHS as a healthcare assistant, just make sure that you are there. And when you're there, I'm going to look at the steps to distribute yourself later on. But this is just some of the statistics. Uh, if you go to employment and labor market, um, that is the government website, you'll find some of this information there. So I'm, I won't be saying much about it. I'm going to post the link afterwards. So what are, how about the business opportunities? There are loads and loads of business opportunities as well, even as a student. Um, for some people, you can be a project manager, depending on the course you're studying. You can be a property manage, managing agent. So it doesn't matter if you've been in this country for less than a year or three years. As long as you have a good credit rating, you can, you can buy a, a, a buy to let property. So another thing I would advise is make sure that your, your credit rating don't get the credit, any credit that you cannot pay back. Make sure that you it is on a minimum level. So if you have a contract phone, make sure that you're paying back on time because that can help you in the future to get probably loans, mortgages in the future, especially if you're thinking of building a future here. If you're thinking of staying back after you study in this country, you want to make sure that your, your credit rated. I learned the ad way. 
I learned about it the hard way. You know, then when I was in college, I got a laptop, I got a phone, like, oh, you can get this, you can get that. Even, even using my name to get for other people. At the end of the day, it was a struggle to pay it back and it's affected my credit rating to poor level. So I learned the hard way. So you want to ensure that you're keeping your credit rating on the good rate. And then if you're on the good rate, you can get overdraft, you can get loan. Obviously, once you pay back the increase, even up, people are getting um, credit card of up to 50,000, 100,000 pounds. So make sure that you keep your credit credit score, um, you know, to, at max minimum is good. So mm -hmm. these are some of the job opportunities as well you can explore as a student. Uh, people are putting money together. I remember um, I spoke with a guy, it was himself and his friends. They are looking to buy a franchise of care. They've already even bought it. So they just need a, they needed a consultant to help them to set up. Um, so they already bought it. So, you know, pulling money together with your friends. So uh, like John mentioned earlier, yeah, see here, everyone wants, just want to survive. So it's not like in Africa, in Africa that, or maybe you should tell people my, sometimes here as well, tell you some people your idea, they might not really see the vision that you're seeing. So you have to make sure that you're speaking to the right people as well. So people are pulling money together to set up, a, to set up businesses. We also can do that even as a student. So you just have to make sure that you know what you're doing. So business ideas, selling on eBay, tutoring, you can set up your own tutor at, you know, at your own convenient time. Online tutoring, people are joining on link on, on Zoom. Of you know, it, so it doesn't matter where the location is, as long as you can use Google Classroom, you can set up tutoring too. Social media influencers, you can even become a student remover. This is just some of the I probably find some of these ideas online. Um, so these are also I post the link. Um, okay. so opportunities within the social care, like I mentioned. I know my time is up. Yeah. Opportunities again. <laughs> These are just some of the statistics. But make sure that you have a clear She's vision. Not, uh, <laughs> more minutes, please. She's just be faithful. <laughs> be faithful with the little that you have. Be faithful for where you are. You are to ask you you do. So be network. And what Mr. John said that if they give him one million pounds and they said they give him 1,000 um, network, it will take the 1,000 network. I would the same. I held my first conference and exhibition in this country, 20, year 2020, conference and awards rather. All the speakers that are there, there are people at the high level, the topmost of their career. I, I had the first black orthopedic surgeon as a speaker. I wouldn't be a speaker, I thought that. That's just the honest truth. But I use the power of LinkedIn to my own advantage. And like, I, like you said, I'm not just going to go to him and say, yeah, I, you know, you're good, you're good. Uh, uh, can you speak? No. I was able to build that relationship. And building relationship just mean maybe commenting on, even volunteering my own time. I told her I wanted to host a conference and, and award. She was like, I'm going to check my diary. She spoke there. Some, um, I have the chief nursing officer um, from, Bem from Birmingham Hospital. These are the people that like in the career top. I spoke to Trick. he said, yes. I spoke to other people, the skills for care operations manager, Tricia. She said, yes. So everyone, why? Because I was able to build that relationship with them. So your network is your network, network. So make sure that you are in the right place at the right time. Find a mentor. A mentor could literally be someone that has been here in this country for a long time and they are doing well. Like my husband and I, we spoke with someone um, last week. This man, he owned a mortgage, he has a mortgage advisor in this country. He's a black man, he's a, he's a Nigerian, um, he's a Nigerian man. He has over 100 staff working for him. So you want to find the right people to speak with. Because the people, yeah, yeah, you know, if, if I'm doing um, cleaning, I'm vice you on because that's all I know. So you want to find the right people, just people that are doing well in their own field to speak with, and also you be a mentor. The little that you know, share that idea with somebody else. Like John mentioned earlier, that people that are coming to this country because he has been there, is able to help other people. And I wish you all the best. Um, so if you have any question, write to me. Ola Inka at dominoconsultancy.com. Um, I, I can't imagine how short 15 minutes is, but thank you so much, Miss Andrew, for the opportunity and Mrs. Aluashe for the opportunity for anchoring this program as well. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you so much, Miss. I know you are fully loaded.
And uh, anyway, there will be more questions for you. And uh, of course, you are already a link. I don't want to start telling who you are because I have had a wonderful experience with you. And I really bless God I come across you uh, in my journey here. So please help me mute everybody. Uh, I can see the, there is a background noise. Okay. I'll just say. Uh... Thank you. So thank you so much. Uh, I believe people have questions for you and then always want to even network. The networking starts with you. So I believe there will be that. So over to you, C. Lua C, uh, are you there? If you're there, please unmute yourself. Lua C. Can anybody hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Lua okay. Oh. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, thanks, ma'am, again for that talk. I gained quite a lot. That mail, that your email address, I think you have to give it out again. <laughs> then, okay, the next is, is our... We'll be calling on Timmy, teammate, to come up to speak with us. But before he comes on, I think I have a short profile on him. Timmy is from Simpleton Consulting. He's a successful business and IT consultant with a passion to help business and individuals simplify strategy and process. He's the founder of Simpleton Consulting, a consultancy with simplicity as its edge. Can we hear me? Yep. Okay. Simen is also well known for simplifying solutions required to solve complex problems by developing strategies and plans required to succeed during any change transition. He has successfully helped over 100 students break through to discover their untapped potentials. He has developed workshops and programs that have transformed the lives of countless men and women and altered the trajectory of businesses across various sectors. And finally, his goal is to always provide value through simplicity to see growth in anyone he encounters. That's a good one. Can we please have Timmy? Hello, hello, hello. Yeah. Can everyone hear me? Can you Thank hear you. me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. Good, mo good morning. Good morning. I am super excited. I am buzzing. Mm -hmm. So you guys will have to, you know, uh, bear with me. And um, yes. So Andrew, please, you might have to give me just a little bit extra time because cool. uh, I've got a lot to say. And everything here is is valuable um but first of all i'd like to say very much thank you to you uh for giving me the opportunity to come here and uh you know share share a little bit of knowledge information and uh also to communicate you know and, and network you know as you guys have said networking is is key in everything we do so yes, thank you very much. So let me let me share my screen. Let me see if I can. Uh, okay, you'd have to give me the ability to do so, please. Yeah, please, could you uh, allow me to share? Because it's saying that it's disabled my sharing. Sister, so, you can please allow him to share. It's done. Okay. Please thank take you. your head, Mr. Fine. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. Let me know when you can see my screen. Yes, we can see. Yeah. You can. Okay. So uh, I'll try not to go too, into too much stories because I really want you to get the the, the meat of, of what I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, but Simpleton Consulting, um, 
is is uh, a baby that uh, came 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 about because of my passion in business and personal growth. And the, the reason that that's come about is because um, if you're doing business, there's a likelihood that if you're growing, it has a good impact on your personal life. And business doesn't necessarily mean just business. It also means your career. So if you're successful in the thing that you do your day to day, you'll have a good, successful personal life as well. And vice versa, if you're doing well personally, mentally, uh, there's the likelihood that it will have a good impact on your business life. So, yes. So my name is Timain Ayoromi. Uh, they call me Timian. This is the Anglo-Saxon pronunciation. For those of you who, who know what that means, you know, when you're working in an office space, they always give you this, you know, like, hola. So for those of you who are like John, Andrew, lucky you. Uh, but for me, yes, they call me Timian. Um, and I'm your simple career strategist, and I believe in keeping things simple. Uh, my, my, my picture here uh, just signifies uh, the genes I got from my parents. I'm not as young as I look. I'm an old man, <laughs> but uh, with a lot of knowledge. So, so, so please, uh, uh, yeah, so going on to what I do, so Simpleton Consulting, we provide a lot of services, as you can see here, market trade analysis, digital transformation, business transformation, process re-engineering, career coaching, digital marketing, software implementation, business strategy, digital strategy. But the, the most important one that I am very passionate about is career coaching. And it's, uh, you could go to a website right, if you wanna have a look. Uh, but career coaching, and I'll tell you why, um, it's important you know john um made a comment about uh when he was given a story about cvs so one of the reasons why i became very passionate about you know uh career coaching is i studied business in uni and studying business i studied business in in uni uh, city, uh university of westminster uh I, I, I was already working. I was working full-time, uh, studying full-time. Um, so I came out of uni. I got my dream job, uh, you know, doing what I wanted to do. But I, I hit a roadblock because that job was a fixed-term job, which was only a year. And after the year, I found that um, I, I couldn't really get another job. And I was trying to think to myself, why wasn't I getting jobs? So I, I would put my CV out. I would go through asking other people for CVs. I'd copy their CVs. I'd, you know, do whatever I needed to do to just try and get interviews. I started getting interviews, but then I was just embarrassing myself when I got to these interviews. That even halfway through, I looked at myself thinking, you know what? Even you should ask them to stop this interview right now because you're talking a lot of crap. And it goes to what uh, John was saying. I had an epiphany. You know, I had a moment that I thought, hmm, there is something wrong with my CV. So I then said to myself, you are a business individual with a lot of knowledge based on what you studied and you're naturally blessed and gifted to be able to plan and strategize. So what is the strategy for you to have a better CV that would give you the right opportunity? And how would you better prepare yourself so you don't feel embarrassed when you actually go to these interviews? So I came up with a strategy knowing how to write what I call the magic CV. Uh, and that CV, when you're doing business or you're doing anything that has to do with strategy, it is, it is, it is meant to position you to unblock certain challenges. And that was the reason why I came up with writing a CV that was able to help me get into the market and get the kind of roles that I wanted. So... That was the story and the changing point of where I became passionate and saying, oh, I just unlocked this secret. 
I need to share it. I need to let everyone know that your CV is a marketing tool of your skill set. And if you're not able to market yourself properly, there is a likelihood that you will not get that role. And also, copying and pasting doesn't work. So I had to spend that time, you know, educating myself on how to get that process done. So what is my goal? So my goal, based on my passion, to be able to develop strategies for people who want to have a better career and grow personally, is to give you a successful strategy based on your skill set, based on your ambition, based on your passion. Also, is to make sure you personally grow as an individual. And what does that mean? You know, a lot of the times when you're in this moment of change, of transition, you go through ups and downs and your personal growth is one of the things that gets impacted. And what that means is you start to have confidence issues. If you're not able to deal with your level of confidence and your mental health in that process of change, there is a likelihood that every day seems like a bad day. So I am very passionate about making sure that number one, you have the right mindset to be able to approach what you need to approach to succeed. Financial growth, come on, you know, you know, you have to have some financial growth, you know, as soon as you hit how you you got bills to pay, you know, you got people who want your help. So I am also passionate about sharing what makes you financially grow. So in a nutshell, that's my goal. So transition roles is something I want to talk about because transition mm-hmm. roles is really about what within my industry I see that is able to help people grow personally, career-wise, and also financially. Now, don't get me wrong, not everybody goes into this field, but this is my field, this is my industry, so I'll share with you what I, what I know. So the roles are business analysts, data analysts, product owners, uh, scrum masters. So for me, I started off as a business analyst, um, I've done so many different, you know, different things before I then became a full-blown consultant for my own consultancy, helping organizations. Uh, so I had my own learning ground, you know, where I, where I learned my trade before I transitioned into being a full-blown consultant. Earning potentials of these roles, you have contracting roles for each of these, uh, which span from 300 to 500 pound a day. And this is stuff that I have been able to help so many people achieve. And in so being, a lot of them have been able to buy houses and, you know, settle themselves down and also start new businesses, transitioning from whatever jobs they were doing, be it business analysts, into maybe what they wanted to really become as business owners. Uh, For permanent and fixed term roles, you have 40,000 to 60,000 pounds. So these things are very, very much achievable. And... And we have strategies for that. So why these roles? Work-life balance. So now we all know that a lot of things are done remotely. So these roles are roles that are hybrid. A lot of the time you can work remotely. So when it comes to things like childcare, you can manage childcare because you're usually going to be working from home. You don't have to go in most of the time. And also you're not spending as much, you know, when it comes to transportation. So these roles are roles that when they're out there, you can manage and juggle things. And for those of you that might want to have some side hustle, hey, it's, it's available as well to give you that time to prepare for side hustles. Growth of technology, digitization, and need for automation is why these roles are very much in demand. You know, so a lot of companies have to digitize things now, move things from being manual to on digital. And automation is a big thing now because people want processes to be quicker. So if processes need to be quicker, you know, they need business analysts, they need data analysts, they need these guys to work on these projects. You know, it's above average earnings. So it's, it's usually high paying. And to be honest, you don't really need much knowledge, but it's high paying. Market demand, the impact of COVID has really seen these roles soar because post pre-COVID, a lot of companies were not prepared 
uh, uh, to set up remotely. They didn't have the infrastructure. They didn't have the technology. They didn't have the human resources to be able to do so. So post COVID now, there's a demand to have business analysis. There's a demand to have data analysis. There's the demand to have scrum masters to manage these projects. There's a demand to have product owners to create new products that would enable their businesses thrive in the whole remote working environment. So there's a high demand because of the impact that COVID had. Uh, social media uh, engagement, again, a lot of people are using social media, a lot of businesses are using social media. So there's a, there's a big thing around digital marketing. So these, these organizations want people who need to come in and do these things. Uh, customer relationship management, case management and self-serve. Self-serve meaning that you can go online and access services like, for instance, your electricity bill, you can actually go online, put in your, your actual readings, and it will tell you how much you need to pay. That's self-serve. A lot of organizations want that. They want to be able to you know, manage what you're doing online. They want you to do it. They don't want you to ring up and, and ask them to do anything. Case management, you know, when you ring up and you want to make a complaint about something, they want to be able to manage that case. They want to be able to see what's happened from start to finish. So. I, I have uh, a partnership with Microsoft doing a lot of their, you know, customer relationship CRM systems, uh, predominantly Microsoft Dynamics. So very, very simple things. Now, the career transition strategy, right? What is the strategy, right? The strategy is to build your confidence in this transition, right? And we do that by starting off with skills suitability. So are you suitable? for that role you want to go for. Because like I said, not everyone can be a business analyst. Not everyone can be a data analyst or product owner or scrum master. But I can help you identify your skill. And then we can begin the journey, which then goes into expert knowledge base, where we actually give you the knowledge that you need and also put you on practical projects so that you can relate, so that you're not like me when I went to interviews I was talking a lot of crap, but at least you can have real life examples within the period that you've done that program and you're able to articulate that and give examples in the interview. You know, psychology of CV writing. The CV writing is a whole psychology in itself. How do you impact someone who has your CV in front of them is the key question. And this is what made me come up with the strategy of how you write it. Because every CV, it takes someone 10 seconds, an average of 10 seconds to decide whether they would actually continue to read your CV and call you for an interview. So the 10 seconds, what is it that they need to read first to make that decision? To even say, okay, I even want to know more about this individual, right? That's what I mean by the psychology. So I've been able to come up with the format the, the, the process, the, the logic that allows you to skip over getting that next phone call to say, yes, we would like to interview. Sell your skills. As I said, we build your confidence to enable you to be able to sell your skills. Don't be shy. If you're good at what you do, say you're good at what you do. You know, if you're a good communicator, why can't you say I'm the best communicator on the planet? What is wrong with that? You have to be very confident because remember, the next person who wants the job is there to sell his or her skills. So they're not coming there to say, oh, I'm average or oh, I can do this. I can try that. They're coming there to tell them this is the value I'm bringing. And you have to be confident. And one of the things I do is to build that confidence up for you so that you can get to the end goal, which is to start that new career. So that is the strategy. But what do you need? What do you need to actually get that strategy going, right? You need a mindset shift. You need a mindset shift. It's very important. You cannot approach things the way you used to. And these are the three key things that I think and I believe has worked with the students that I have worked with and the individuals that I've been able to work with. You know, number one, you have to have the mindset of, yes, you can. Yes, it's a new role. Yes, it's a new industry. But yes, you can. Yes, you can do it. Yes, you can transition. Yes, you can begin that new career. The minute you have that, it puts you on a new pedestal 
to be able to say, yes, let's go for it. I know it's going to be challenging, but I'm ready to get through this. And this is where we are. Attention, please. You know, you need to pay attention to what is going on during the program. The knowledge that is being shared, everything that you get to do, you need to pay full attention because every single detail would come into play when you actually experience those moments of applying for roles, selling yourself and going for interviews. Patience, nothing good comes easy. You have to be patient. Don't be in a hurry, right? So these are the three key things. And finally, um, finally, finally, you can register your interest, right? It's a six weeks program. You know, we got live project experience and also it's, it's in groups. So you get to work in, in team and you get that support. Uh, our next program starts on the 20th of February. Um, Again, they're limited spaces because we have to take it in groups. I will drop the link. But even if you're not registering, please just register your interest. I always have sessions where we just talk about different challenges and different things that, you know, can enable you to access uh, uh, different things. So it's all about strategy. It's all about planning. You cannot go into anything without having a strategy and a plan. It doesn't really matter what that thing is you know, have a strategy of how you're going, if you want to move house, you have to have a strategy and a plan on how you're going to move house. You can't just say, I'm just going to wake up and I'm just going to rent something or I'm just going to buy something. You need to have the strategy. Okay. Am I, if I'm a family person, am I moving to an area that has good schools? First question. Oh, what do I really need? I have a two bed right now. Do I really need a three? Can I still manage a two? Right financially what's the impact of going to that area is that going to impact any other investments that i need to make before you even begin the planning you need to actually look at those things and actually have a strategy and it's the same with your career what is it that you want to do i was very strategic in how i actually road mapped myself to get to become a consultant because I knew that every single uh, opportunity I got to work on any project, I knew I need to be very strategic because I had a full plan of where I was trying to go to. And by the way, guys, you got me. You got me. I'm here to serve. I'm here to support. I'm here to give you as much knowledge as possible because um, my satisfaction has always been in seeing the other person succeed. It's important, as well as I do it for businesses, those for individuals carry more weight for me because, um, you know, people come with families, people come with uh, different backgrounds, and they're just looking to be able to just transition in, through that change, through those difficulties, and just have a little bit more balance to be able to focus on the things that they really want. And that is where I come in, to give you that support to go through that transition and to enable that process of change to be easier. So I think that's it for me. Um, I will drop the link below, like I said. So thank you very much, Andrew, for the time. Uh, I, I thought, you know, I'll keep it very short and, and, and I, I hope I haven't overgone my time. I said short there, but hey, thank you very much anyway. Um, if there are any questions, guys, feel free to drop it, but I would definitely encourage you to register because we'll be in touch um, with content. And if you do have people who you think are interested, uh, also share the link with them as well. Okay. Thanks for that session. Mr. Andrew, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Yeah, I think it's thank it's you so much. Um, today. That was a wonderful delivery, and I, I'm very sure people will, of course, I thank you for that. In link, I'm very sure people will be much interested in that. Thank you for uh, the wonderful, amazing presentation. And I, I'm, I am glad I come across you as well. But it's, it's great to be having your network.
and I'm sure you are, like you said, the networks are waiting for her. So, see, you called me. Yeah, I was not hearing anybody's voice again. That oh, was why I called. Okay. So now um, we will go on short tea break, but in the meantime, um, we ask those who are interested in the, the, the quiz stroke game. If you are interested, just drop your just drop your name, so we can start selecting, and then you start preparing to present that. Uh, I like we said, there is a prize to be won, and you're going to be glad about that for eventual winner, so to say, or the best um, presenter. So uh, the game is, if you have, we all came in here through what they call statement of purpose. If you have a statement of purpose, just try to deliver it under uh, three minutes. So two minutes minimum, three minutes maximum, deliver it and the best one will have a price for them. So if you are interested in that, please also drop your name while the tea the break is going. So we'll be back in the next five minutes. Thank you.
So, hello. 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 Okay. I when are we talking? The short break is, is over now. We have to continue. Okay. Oh, and the next person to give us a talk will be Olubenga Ogumbo Dede. I hope he's on with us. Good, good, good morning. Please, can you can you hear me? Okay. It's the MDCS. CIEC Group, Winners Chapel, Cambridge, and Cambridge Nigeria Society. You're welcome. Please go on. Awesome. Can, can you hear me? My line yes. is in. My we line can is hear you. on and off. The apologies you before you go awesome. ahead. I want to recognize uh, some presence here. Uh, I don't know whether Amaka, I can see Amaka. Is it the same Amaka and uh, Chantel? Hi, good morning. Yes, Amaka is uh, one of the presidents, and, and she's always been, she has been a wonderful woman. That we've been working together, collaborating, uh, just like all, all the schools in the UK, we come together on the same platform to work together. And she has been uh, another rock behind that, just like John. She's an iron lady. Uh, I think she can just introduce herself, then you will know she's. Um, yeah, I'm here. Good morning, everyone. I won't be able to turn my camera because I'm currently at work. But then I'll just say a few things. I want to say um, thanks for every idea everyone has shared on this platform. Um, I didn't join from the beginning, but I really learned a few things from everyone who has spoken. And yeah, I have a question for Simple Simply Fit, is it? Yeah, concerning the trainings and all of that. So uh, it's really a wonderful session since I joined and I, I think I would applaud everyone that put, like, put this together. So thank you everyone and I'm still here listening and I, I just want to say thank you to everybody and welcome to everyone who just um, came to the UK as uh, to study here. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you so, so much, my sister. That was um, quick and amazing. Uh, the next is uh, Chukwemeka Charity. We were asking, for, uh, is she still on the call? I saw her just now. Charity, are you still there? I'm not so sure. No, she is not. So over to you, my wonderful brother, and the rock behind the the pillar that is holding around her. And he's an amazing, amazing, amazing man. And I'm very sure so many students must have encountered him. And he's been a great help to us. He's one of the leaders in Cambridge Nigerian community, Nigerian Cambridge community. However, that is most anyway. But he's been a rock, and a, a pillar that has been holding us together. Uh, he has helped us in so many ways, and it's always there to help. It was here the previous time um, when we had this same program and it's back here because it's always is a, a member of the family, so to say, and it's always here to assist in any way. So thank you, my brother, and over to you. Awesome. Thank, thank, thank you very, thank you very much, Andrew, and, and thanks to the previous speakers. You know, when you have great speakers, they just make your work. Uh, much easier. I woke up this morning asking myself, what am I going to say? I've been here more than once already. Um, um, so, But just the speakers uh, before me, starting with John Samuel, uh, Olainka, and then uh, Timei, I mean, everything they said, I think just encapsulates it all. I wouldn't take too much of your time. I think what, what I was really just talk about, uh, I'll share my screen since it's already established protocol to do that. I'm going to be very, very brief. Uh, and what I'm sharing, I actually shared at an event last week, but I've adapted it a little bit. And for me, I think it boils down to that question of purpose. And I'm going to look at it from a, a very different angle, um, just briefly, very quickly. People often ask me now in the UK, you know, many interesting questions do the next step. 
Uh, and I think it's, it's really about purpose. Um, and I think that saying by William Barclay that there are two great days in a person's life, the day we are born and the day we discover why we are born. I think that's very important because I think everything boils down to purpose. You know, once you're very clear on why you're here, then the rest becomes easy. You know, um, very often I get a phone call. The next big thing is uh, here too, through care. The next big thing is doing this and doing that. And the question I often ask people is, are you even clear about your purpose? Because once you're clear about your purpose, things become easily defined. But when we're not clear about our purpose, it's very, very easy to be swung thus and, and forth. And then in 2011, I gave a talk in Cambridge on the road less traveled. And I think as I come, you know, maybe towards the end, that becomes very clear. But it's from a poem um, by Robert Frost. And I wouldn't want to bore you, but the, the end of that poem says, Two roads diverge in a wood, and I took the one less traveled, and that has made all the difference. Taking the road less traveled has made all the difference. And I think what that really means is that, you know, wherever the majority are headed is never always the right way. And I'll say that again, wherever the majority are headed is never always the right way. It's, it's about choosing the road less. I think everything our speakers have said today from John Samuel talking about his connection with Rotary. I'm a member of Rotary Club uh, here as well. Uh, online, that's, you know, everything is coming in, everything is about humility, just starting from somewhere. Um, the journey so far, um, what was shared about careers with Timeni as well. Uh, it's really about the road less travel because the fact is there are only 21 of us on this platform. Um, the majority are not here. They're probably working or doing something or the other. So you're already on that road, less travel. But a number of things to quickly go, go through. Number one is the plan. As a person of faith, I believe God has a plan for every one of us. That plan for you is different from my plan. There's a plan for each of us. We must discover that plan. The second thing is that there's going to be a process. When you come into a country like the United Kingdom, you start from somewhere, maybe where you like to start from, but there's a process involved. I don't know of anybody that hasn't got this story of how they started. I was speaking to a friend's wife maybe about two, three weeks ago, and she's like, I'm tired of the UK. I want to go back to Nigeria. It's just so much easier. And I said, look, everybody I know has gone through this process. It's a test. It is a test. Secondly, can you endure this season of seemingly unfruitfulness? There's a process involved. Number three, there could be challenges, persecution. There's always an opposition to any divine agenda or any great agenda. I don't know of any champions without scars. I was sharing last week at the program I spoke at that one of my first jobs in the UK uh, was I was cleaning Tesco's early in the morning. And I still have a scar from cleaning Tesco because I cut um, the top of my finger. I still have that scar today, but I was I, I was just told to go home and they never called me back, back again. It was through an agency. And that job taught me never do something that they can easily replace you. Tesco could easily replace me as a cleaner because they had loads of cleaners. There's go, always going to be opposition. You're going to go through opposition in your studies, in careers, in a country that is, is institutionally racist. You're going to go through challenges because of your accent, the way you look, the qualification you've got. There will be persecution. And champions always have these scars. Number four, there's a price to pay. It's not going to come cheap. You know, very often people post pictures on Facebook uh, about life in the UK. Or jobs. I've all proven that for you to be great at anything, there's a 10,000 hour rule. It takes about 10 years, to be honest with you. Many of those guys invested years and hours. We've got to pay the price. It's not going to come cheap. They're not, they're not um, overnight successes on the journey. 
Number five is the place, right? I'm sorry I'm, if you're not a Christian, I, I use the scripture here. The Lord said to Abraham, get out of your country and from thy kindred to a land I will show you. I say the place because I also believe that there's a place for you to prosper. There's a location. For some is London, for some is Cambridge, for some is Canada, for some is Nigeria. Let's be sensitive to the place. You know, very often, going by what I said about the majority, there has to be a place for you to success. I know, I know people who would say, I wouldn't move out of a particular city because I have friends in that place. Well, that future job for you to be somewhere else. So we must be flexible enough for the place. Number six, the people. Who do I need for this journey? All our speakers have spoken about networking the right people. Who do you need to journey? Uh, something, I think it was, um, apologies, my phone is going up. I think it was John that mentioned maybe one of his lecture buildings to start um, a site, uh, uh, for example. Uh, people join last week at the end as well. That I'll be worried if all my friends were Nigerians. I, I will be very worried if everybody I hang around with are Nigerians. Because particularly if you're in a foreign country, you're going to need other people than people like you. Walk with the wise and you become wise. Walk with the wise and, you know, iron sharpens iron. Who are your friends? The people you journey with determines what accompanies you. I realize as well, and I think Olayinka mentioned this as well. One of the things I realized, particularly as a business owner as well, is that the, the, the people you meet when you first arrive in this country will have a lot to say about where you will end up. The people you meet, what they say. In other words, their limits, their restrictions will be yours as well if you don't break out of those groups because they often speak from their limited perspective. So you need to be around people who've seen further. If not, you might be limited. So going forward, I'm coming to the end of this. A number of things to bear in mind. Number one is self-examination. Know yourself. What are my strengths and my weaknesses? What are my career goals? Don't just have random goals. Have very clear goals. Do you have any extracurricular interest? Or is it just university, church, mosque, work? Is there anything else? You've been in the United Kingdom. Have you even poured around the place? You know, some people are so worried that they don't even know the country. I know people who they've arrived in this country and all they've been eating from day one is Nigerian food. They've not even tried the local food. You're not integrated yet until you know why they like what they like. So break out of, of your comfort zone. Other good things as well is you might need to learn a new language. Consider your career options, develop problem solving skills, develop leadership skills, creativity. These things will help you find a mentor. Others have spoken about it. Always worth the journey, that road less traveled. But I'll close by saying this. I asked a friend of mine last week, during much older than me, he graduated from Angela Rossi University. And I asked him a question. I said, you know, why are so many of us not as successful as we should be? And he said, there's a problem with the black man. The problem is that we don't share. That's the problem. We don't share. So somebody knows something that is working, he doesn't want to share with somebody else. But if you look at the Indian community, if you look at the Jewish community, what has made them successful is sharing. The reason we have, why we have an Indian prime minister and the reason why we have, if you look at the British cabinet, uh, there are more Indians and Pakistanis than anybody else, they share. Often in our community, we're not very good at sharing. If you discover something that works, share. If you discover ways to get accommodation, share. If you discover job opportunities, share. If you discover scholarship for children, share. This is why we're limited, because somebody knows it, they don't want to share, or I went through a very difficult time, everybody else has to go through the difficult time. I had it taught when I arrived in the UK, everybody else should have it taught. I think once we break out of that cycle of self-centeredness, then our world becomes a better place. The fact remains that you can't do this on your own. You need other people to journey with. And I think that's the great thing about our society, what this society uh, is out here to do, is to encourage one another. Let's pull each other up. Um, let's, let's share information 
as much as one. And let's also correct ourselves. If there are people among those who are messing up, let's correct them. Let's correct them. If people are doing things, when I was a student, the biggest thing was people got broke. They started doing credit card, credit card fraud. After a while, when visas were running out, they were getting married to foreign girls and having babies were not prepared to look after. Let's call out bad behavior amongst ourselves. But at the same time, when we see good things happening, let's share among ourselves. That's all I've got to say this morning, Mr. President, and everybody on this platform. Thank you very much uh, for having me back uh, on this platform. Um, but please and please and please, let's never forget where we're coming from. I've heard people say things like, Nigeria is a bad country. I will never go back there again. Keep your options open. You never know where you may end up. You may be called to come and save your country as a minister for health in the future. If you keep running down that country, it's rubbish, it's bad, uh, everything is bad about it. Don't do that. You just don't know where you're going to end up. You see, I think I have one or two minutes. Maybe I'll probably just drop this as well. Do you want to stay in the UK beyond your visa or the US or Canada? There's a simple way to do it. Be a person of value. Every country in the world is looking for people to add value. Organizations are looking for people to add value. So rather than panicking and worrying about visa changes, just make yourself a person of value. That, that's all it takes. If you ask me what is the secret, I'll tell you the secret is be a person of value and the system will keep you. How do you become a person of value? Your network, your education, work experiences, service, all these things makes you a person of value. I think once you take care of that, the rest takes care of itself. Thank you very much. God bless you. Uh, very happy to take some questions at the end. Thanks, Mr. Andrew. Thank you, everyone. God bless. Thank you so, so much. Uh, if you see someone of value, then you, of course, from the talk, you will know. And then someone who encourages working together. His life has always been working together with us. So it's, and that's uh, even goes across just us all over the places, all over the world. So I really appreciate your presence and that talk. That's amazing. So say please. Yeah. Thanks again, Ulubinga Kupodidi. Before you go ahead, someone raised his hand. Damola, do you want to say something? Okay. Okay. I saw. Ah, sorry, I didn't know. But okay, to say that, I will say, um, that is a big one coming from from everyone, and that is a big one coming from the person um, to Mister O O O. It's. Uh, to 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 just crown it all, <laughs> yeah, to crown it all. Say, um, I've actually come have an encounter with him before, mm -hmm. and um, till now I still have an encounter with. Him. You might not know the person speaking, maybe he might, <laughs> but till now I still have an encounter with him. He has been an amazing personality, and uh, he has actually helped me in different ways, spiritually, physically, wow. and. Wow. Sometimes I may be a type of person that do not talk, yeah. Well, except maybe if I'm in my circle or something, or a need that arises for that. But trust me, whatever I said is actually how it works. Wow. Because I like to, you know me to understand as well. <laughs> uh, no matter how it is or how fast it is, I will have said I'm not among people that will tell you UK is this, UK is that. It actually works. The system works, and um, depending on what you, how you engage yourself, the people around you have you said, and your own plan is the key. Your own plan is the key because I was, I have some friends that keep on like ah, what will be the next step after the UK uh, after masters? It's always their their plan, and they forget to have like oh, what do I want for myself? How can I contribute to the system? So. Like, for example, where I work now before leaving the office, I'm the only black in the office and I'm the only guy in the office. Mm. But I just spent two months in the office and I'm already in the office in a better position all because of the culture and contribution, how you place value on yourself. So I will say thank you very much, Mr. <laughs> Everyone, thank you a lot. I appreciate thank it. You, thank you so, so, so much. That's a wonderful feedback. Um, it's good to talk about someone who is good. And I must assure you, he's not only him. Is being amazing to the group, but every other person that I've spoken, 
I can assure you. And even you still hear from great men, the, the last two great men, you will see everyone has been so amazing to the family. And it shows that the togetherness we are preaching, they are not only saying it, it's what they practice. And I thank God for uh, that uh, wonderful feedback. I, a host of other people who have one or two things to say about these people, and especially Mr. Binga. So um, I think I have, uh, we have uh, Vincent on the call. Are you able to talk, Vincent? Vincent, yeah, I'm able to talk. Yeah, I'm here. Well, we're, the last time, uh, Louis he was asking for those uh, the executive and the committee. This is one of them. Uh, one of those who have been the I've never seen a man like him. I must say, uh, a man who is committed to. We started all this together, and then if there's anybody who is making Jensford, uh, I can go to Jensford. And like Mr. Benga just said, it is not one person that will do it. It's all of us. And if there's anyone who has been the rock behind this uh, session, especially uh, taking care of Jensford, someone who will leave his own house for others, I've never seen a man like him. <laughs> so, and I, oh, I've also even enjoyed, because I came to his, when I came to Jensford to speak to our people, our colleagues over there, he even hosted me. That's uh, he left his house for me, so <laughs> and I had a wonderful food, so to say. So he's been a I can't really say enough who this guy is. So please, over to you. Just uh, one or two minutes. What you have to okay. say? To um, um, good afternoon, every everyone. Um, I'm very very sorry that um, I came in late. Uh, sorry, I. Actually, there is a, a work I've booked before now for a long time. So canceling would have been a little bit, uh, <laughs> a little bit uh, this thing. So as I said, let me just attend. And I also struggle like to get a time so that my break would just fall in between the time that the meeting will start. But I was not able to. So I'm very, very sorry about that. So just, um, I don't really know what happened. Maybe it is being recorded. I will still go through them. But I believe that uh, justice has, has been done. So I will always say that um, uh, if it is able, they will say that Abela won Abela. So you've come, you've, you've come. So from day one, start making your plans. You know the reason why you are here. I know the reason why I came. So I will always tell you, start making your plans from, from, from day one. Give 100% to your, to your uh, school, your school attendance and everything. Um, especially this first semester and second semester. Third semester is more or less like um, enjoyment and galangalanvanting, but first and second semester take your attendance seriously. Why you see make your plan A, your plan B, your plan C, and your plan D. So just have them listed. If this one does not work out, this one will work out. Um, the last speaker that was also, that just spoke, the last speaker that also, there's something that I picked um, from two of them. He said you should make yourself really relevant and make yourself and uh, fix yourself. So not only only making yourself relevant too. There are some areas in this um, country they actually need people, like area of um, healthcare, area of um, IT, and all, all those ones. And any other area, you may think like this is where they actually need them um, human and uh, uh, resources and all that. So you can just walk towards that place and fix yourself in. So why you see school? And um, also, mm -hmm. luckily, uh, I think ending last year, there was also an approval for uh, even for you to change your visa, even for you before you even uh, graduate. So you can see pick the opportunity to and walk toward, towards mm -hmm. it. So please, if there is anything um, you want us to help, especially in change for you can always uh, reach me. I know that uh, majority of us with accommodation, the accommodation have really been uh, like a, a tool, but don't worry, very, very soon, I believe that one will get um, some permanent jobs and you have that um, reasonable salary. So you'll be able to also to stand short, short, short for some persons and um, some of these things will not become the thing of the, of the past. Thank you very much, Shanda. Thank you, and that's, that's so, so, so amazing. Um, Everything he has said, just like every other person as well, everything he has said is what he practice. That's what they stand for, and that's what they do. They are not just preachers, they are doers. 
and I'm really glad for all this set of people God has brought to my way. And I'm not choosing money. I'm choosing this set of people and I can see the value in my life. So uh, please, Lucy. Yeah, I'm still here. We have well, ARU Senior International Manager from Africa, and that's Nanado. I think he's the next to go home. Please, are you there? Yes, I am. I am. Um, thank you very much, uh, Rachel. Uh, thank you very much, um, Andrew, uh, Vincent. Um, um, Dr. Ben, uh, Dr. Um, is it Ulu, 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 Ulu Benga? And then uh, good afternoon, everyone. Apologies, I, um, I am having to join in from a car. Uh, I have to uh, park and then join in because I am on my way. I need to be at an assignment uh, by 1 p.m. But uh, most importantly, thank you all. Um, I believe, thank you all, thank you um, executives, thank you all uh, committee members for, for putting this together. Um, I believe I may have had interactions with yourselves one way or the other. Either we spoke, either we've met in person or either we've you found a correspondence for me one way or the other. And in case we we haven't met, I want to say hello. Uh, this is me. Um, I meet most of you and they're like, oh, are you the Nana? Yes, I am the one. Um, Andrew is my big ogre. <laughs> Andrew is my big ogre. Um, yeah, but, uh, so I want to be very brief. I mean, mindful of, mindful of all the bits that have been said. I think, honestly, um, uh, I would say, you know, 100%. Um, a lot has been said. I mean, there are a few points by Vincent uh, was so spot on. Um, so I, I kind of will touch base on, on, on other bits that haven't been said or other bits that haven't really been emphasized on. So uh, number one, as, as, as you all are aware, um, currently you're under tier two visa regulation, you know, so you really want to make sure uh, that keep an eye on attendance, you know, um, that's, that's a common area that uh, uh, most, most often new arrivals tend to take it for granted. So arrival, uh, sorry, attendance, you know, make sure you close. I think is to end in a position where you are having to resubmit your assignment. Um, it's, it's, it's a horrible, you have to go through mitigating circumstances, avoid all of that. It's not worth the battle, it's not worth the wahala. So um, assignments, attendance is also crucial. Uh, please make sure you log in. Uh, if at all possible, avoid getting into any wahala any issues with the compliance team, UKVI, then it gets very messy, you know. Uh, once you have used with attendance, it gets logged onto your record and it gets very messy. So avoid it if you can. Same with uh, uh, assignments, uh, uh, project work, thesis submission, please stick to the deadline. Avoid at all. If at all you can't stick with the deadline, submit it well on time. Uh, sometimes we, 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 from where we come from, uh, we tend to be a bit laid back and we leave it till last minute, you know, the assignment, we know, for instance, due on the 14th, we leave it till about the 13th night and you do have, you know, you do have eventualities happening, you know, there are times your, your system is playing up, your computer is playing up, your laptop is playing up, and then you leave yourself into a big, 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 big mess. So, Please, please give yourself enough time. Avoid late submissions if at all you can. Um, and then I really want to hammer on this. I think uh, my my brother Olu uh, did mention on it. You see what? I I've been with ARU for I think about seven eight years now, uh, and I've seen I've seen on first time. I'm going to I'm going to let me cite a classic scenario for you. When I first joined Anglia Raskin. Uh, from Sunderland, when I came over from Sunderland, I joined Anglia Raskin. Uh, the student union, right, was all, it was all led by, so the leadership of the student union were all Oibos, right, as in British Oibos. Okay, now fast track to today, and I'm sure most of you would have seen that at present, um, the leadership of the student union are, are mostly uh, our brothers and sisters from Asia, which is brilliant. I mean, I've no, I don't have any problem. But you know what? I, 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 how that happened? 
they came together, rallied together, joined forces, and then decided that, look, with our numbers, we surely can take over the leadership. And for the first time, right, with my seven, eight years in the ARU, I literally saw that the entire leadership is going down two years now. The entire leadership has now been replaced by our brothers and sisters from Asia, which is brilliant. And I love it. I don't have any problem. But how did that come about it? I noticed they are very united, very united in their language, very united in, in sharing, very united in the activities, very united in the approach. Oftentimes, um, the challenge with us from where we come from, and I'm from Ghana, and you know, Ghana and Nigeria, we are, we are, we are twins, except that the Ghana Jollof is better than Nigeria Jollof. And Andrew knows that. Vincent also knows that. No. <laughs> right? Let's not start a debate again. <laughs> Let's not start a debate. Uh, but uh, my point is, uh, what I have noticed is they are very, very united, right? They share ideas. They even, even, I mean, I, I, um, even when they want to mafia the system, you don't want to play with the system, they stand united. The, 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 on the other hand, the challenge I see with us, right, is we are very, very, very disunited. We are, we are, you know, each one for himself, God for us all. And that therefore means that which should, uh, that which should have required a group effort, right, it would have meant that I'll be doing my own, he'll be doing his own, she'll be doing her own. And ultimately, we might win, we might, you know, we might overcome, but it will take us so many years. It will take us so much, you know, we'd have to, go, each one would have to go around, knock their head, knock their head, knock their head, and eventually we'll discover it. Whereas with our colleagues, they are so united. In fact, let me, uh, uh, let me share a, a story I encountered just two weeks ago, what was it? Two weeks ago, I had a couple of, um, um, I'd, I'd been undertaking um, guest lecturing. I just wanted to do that for, for last semester. I just wanted, in addition to what I do, just wanted to do it for one or two reasons. And then as part of my class, I the class that I was, I was, I was teaching, I had uh, four Asian students. I'd always been wondering where they lived, right? So I asked them, where do you live? They're like, oh, we live in um, Upton Park. I said, okay. So I, you know, I got enthused. I thought, okay, let me prove further. And as I proved further, I got, it got even, even more interesting. We live in Optim Park. It's, 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 it's a house, right? It's, it's, a, it's a house for a colleague Asian. And he is turned the house into a host. I said, what? How is that possible? He said, there are 15 of us in the house. I said, what? 15 people? I said, yeah. It's, it's a four-bedroom house. But what he's done is that he's, he's turned the whole place uh, he's replaced the beddings with hostel beddings, right? And he's, I'm like, how is that possible? And he said, well, the reason is that the owner of the house, a number of them were his colleagues as well, a number were his family members, a number as well were other fellow Asian brothers and sisters who were stranded and they did not have a place. I said, oh, wow, this is really, really, I mean, yes, you know, the excess of having to turn the whole thing to accommodate 15 people, that's a bit worrying. But the motive, right, to, to help out to colleagues, the motive to help out to other friends that are stranded, I thought that was really, really catching. Classic example. I lived, right, when, so when I, when I was pursuing my master's, then I lived in Upton Park. If perchance any of you um, happens to go to Upton Park, I want you to take a critical look. It's one of the few places in the UK that you feel like you are in either India or you are in Sri Lanka. It feels so much in it. In fact, while I was working up in Park, you feel like you're a stranger, although you're in the UK, right? And fast track to a few years ago, there were a lot of Oyibo, right? White Oyibos in Optin Park. But you know what they've done? They've all moved as they felt the force of unity, right? from our brothers and sisters who were determined, they were determined to, to purchase all houses in Optin Park. Now, if you go to Optin Park, as soon as you get out of the train station, you take, you take a stroll and you feel so lost because it feels like you're in India. 
right? It feels like you're in New Delhi. And I've been to New Delhi, so I know what I'm talking about. It feels like you are in a strange place. And for me, the positive, the, the positive thing that I discovered from them is they are very united. So on the issue of being united, I come to emphasize it. I, I come to emphasize, let's be united in our approach. Um, uh, if there's something you know that you, you know, you think it will be of essence. And I think the, 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 my brother who said it, you know, oftentimes I don't know where this demon or where this devil comes from that, you know what, it took me 15 years to go through. It took me 20 years. It took me five years. Yeah. So my brother too needs to go through and experience the pain. I'm like, eh, that is evil, you know, uh, because you know, there are a number of us, I'm sure by now, if, um, if, if, if Andrew is to share his experience within a year or two that he's been around, he's, he's, he's learned so many things. Same with Vincent and so many other colleagues that have been around for a while. And there are times you don't need to rewrite history. You know, there are times you don't need to rewrite a new book. It's not worth it. You know, so again, um, I want to really emphasize, please, let's be united. Let's be united. And then I think for me, I'm a Christian. I'm sure most of us, a number of us may be Christians, or even if you're Muslim. But you see, there's something interesting that recently I noticed, um, even in the Bible that we do read, or in the Quran that we do read, and you notice very well that anytime you hear demons, you know demons in the Bible, like, like the man with the legion, the man with you know, 10,000 demons in him, you never hear demons saying I. Anytime you, when you check your Bible, anytime you hear demons talk, we, 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 we. And for me, the, the, the pinnacle of it is, so there is this encounter, now I'm sound like a preacher, apologies. There is an encounter um, that um, Jesus had right um, in the Bible, and he met a man who had been living in caves and all of that. And and they, 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 if you read the Bible, which is there were there were legions, ten thousand plus demons. In it. So you can imagine every demon, every foolishness lived in the man. But what shocks me, and it's something I've really been thinking about it as as us as Africans, you know, as us as a united people, is that demons have enough common sense. Right. Remember, these were different demons. So you had uh, pornography, you had you had drugs, you had every kind of foolishness living in the man. But the demons have the common sense enough, right, on seeing Jesus to say with one voice, not with two, not with three, not with four, not with five. Because remember, every demon, you know, has a speciality. So by now, you would expect that every demon is shouting, hey, do this to us, hey, do that. And then there's chaos and confusion. But the demons have enough common sense that they all agree that with one voice and they plead to the master, they plead to Jesus that, oh God, don't worry, just cast us out into the pigs. And I'm like, demon, I mean, it's the first time you see demons in the Bible doing something good. You know, we all know that demons are, you know, something evil. But I'm like, demons even have the common sense to know that you cannot win this battle when you are, when you are disunited. You cannot, it takes so much effort when you are fighting with each other, when you are pulling each other apart. But when you are with one voice, one echo, you know, one message, you, it makes so much. So again, I kind of emphasize, let's be united, right, in our approach. And I, 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 I must confess, I love what um, the executives, you know, are doing and, you know, the effort which they are pushing. Um, I tell you what, Vincent did mention about accommodation. If we are united, it's very easy to solve accommodation needs. Honestly, if we are united, it's very easy to pull hands here, there, together, and we can easily make it happen. So um, please, let's be united. And then lastly, I also want to encourage as many of us and this is leading to my earlier submission uh, that um, I noticed that our, our colleagues, our brothers, you know, uh, from Asia have taken up all the positions. And I think um, I would also want to encourage us to be, to be counted. Those of us who love to, you know, uh, show, who love to, you know, take up leadership. So by all means, please go for it. If you need any support, let me know. And lastly, just to also say, look, I'm around. Uh, those of you that uh, I'm mostly in Chelmsford, although I came to Cambridge. If there's anything you're not sure, if there's anything you're knocking your head about, you know what? Come, let's talk. Right? Trust me, I will not bite. Uh, come, let's sit and talk. If there are some ideas you want us to talk about, I'm more than happy. You know, I'm more than happy. Uh, last year, and I don't. I, I, I'm putting this. I'm putting this out here. For instance, I one of the one of our, one of the brothers who came from Nigeria, I said to him, look, there is a, because I approached him because he was a realtor in Nigeria. So I said, you know what? There's a huge problem. Um, because then he was even struggling with his accommodation. And I discussed with him a few things. I said to him, you know what? Um, I want you to go and think about it. 
right? And then let's join hands. Let's have a two, three, people, four, five people. Let's join hands and then solve this accommodation problem. To date, I never heard from him. So last time I bumped into him on campus, I said, I thought we were meant to solve the problem together. And he laughed at me and said, uh, well, when I came, I needed to look at that. Look at that. I said, no, see, that's why we always struggle. Because if it were to be our brothers and colleagues from Asia, I bet you me, by now they would have run with this vision and they would have executed it. So in a nutshell, welcome. Um, take uh, attendance serials. Don't, don't joke with assignments. Don't be late. Avoid the submissions. Let's be united. And as well, if there's anything that you are not sure, anything that you need, anything we need to discuss, trust with me, come around, let's have a chat. Thank you very much. And as once again, congratulations to the executives. And let's let's help support your work. As you are aware, this is voluntary, right? The Andrews, the Vincent, the Rachel, they don't take a dime, they don't take a penny. Um, they, they're just doing this out of love. So as well, I think the only thing we can do to, to, to say to them, well done, is to support. You show up doing meetings, right? Next week's event, let's show up, let's invite our friends. Um, and like, like I said, you know, that's really way we can make our voices to be heard. Thank you very much. And uh, I, if anybody has got a question, by all means, I'm happy to take the question. Other than that, thank you. And once again, well done to our able leaders and our executives. And finally, Andrew, I just want to put it out there. Ghana Jalof is better than Nigerian Jalof. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with everything you said. I said the last one. <laughs> uh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, I keep saying these are people who walk the talk. Uh, when he's preaching unity, he has always been one. Despite being an uh, ARU official, he has not presented himself as an ARU official. He has presented himself as a member of this family. And uh, like he said, Ghana and Nigeria are brothers, and that's how he has been uh, working with us, like twins, working together. And that can only encourage us as well. If someone who has already reached a particular height is willing to work with us, then who are we not to work together? And the, set, the same sets um, we heard from every other person. And the Vincent that I just mentioned, his journey has been very smooth, he just uh, got another victory. I don't want to announce here. Just got another victory he, that we, many people aim to achieve here. Just got another victory just because he's been working on this right part of coming together and working together. And the same has been those for those who have been talking. So we can only encourage ourselves to this togetherness. Um, enough of big man. Uh, I, I don't want to be part of these ones. Enough of uh, I can survive alone. Of course, it will backbite. So uh, like he's, he has been preaching and um, something just came up recently. Uh, even the other uh, countries, they also are feeling the heat of what he just said now. Uh, a particular set of a particular country taking over the whole um, leadership of the school. Then it is it, it sends a message to us that we also need to work. And they came, came to us that they are ready to work with us. And that is what we, that's the get together they had yesterday to introduce that unity because they believe that there is power in that unity. So in terms of numbers, I don't think we are far behind. Nigeria is still the third largest uh, market for UK immigration to this date. So if the first two are making waves in the UK, China is already recognized a respected country anywhere in the world. India is dominating, of course, we can see that one. Uh, now they are, the, they are the number one officer in the country and they have many around them in the same cabinet. So if they can reach that height, then it's left for us, the third largest, what are we doing? So thank you, my brother. And I really appreciate your support. He has always been, from the start time we started, he has been there. He has attended all our uh, um, orientation and every of our program, even the one coming next week, the dinner, he has indicated interests and is ready to work with us to ensure the success. So please, this is using this privilege to also invite us. If you have not paid for that dinner, please uh, do so. And if you know the graduates among you who, who have uh, um, really not heard about much about this, please share the information. It's not going to be one person or the other that will be sharing the information or when we are talking about unity, it's about us all, please. 
let us do something to win our glory. And I believe Nigeria has a lot of glories. Uh, like Mr. Gwinga said, we should not be talking about it's, it's, we should not be talking about the negatives in the Nigeria. You know? We should be positive about it because whether we like it or not, that's where we come from. And the more we denigrate that place, the more we denigrate whatever certificate we get from it, whatever name, whatever name we bear. Uh, someone was saying, he was talking about a school she graduated from in Nigeria, and she was saying the school is shit. I said, the more you talk about the school as shit, the more your certificate becomes shit. So the more you talk about as like, presents Nigeria, we can, among ourselves, we can talk about the problems of Nigeria and how we can get solution to it. But to outsider, they call themselves Great Britain. That's packaging. And everybody has been calling them Great Britain. So we also can present ourselves as great member of a country, and our country is great. Ghana is great. Africa is great. Nigeria is great. Of course, it adds greatness to whatever certificate or whatever personality we are presenting as representing that country. So um, over to you, please, um, to avoid another lecture. Over to you, um, Sister C. Indeed. Yes, it's questions and answers section. So you've got question, you can raise your hand and you just ask your question, direct it to whoever it is you're asking and there will be answers. That's the session. Hello. Hello, we can hear you. Do you have anybody who has any question? Some people have been asking the questions on the chat. But if you still have any question, you can just raise your hand. And ask for all the speakers who have spoken, whatever question you have for them, they are willing to answer. Anyway, if there is none, yeah. and no one has indicated interest in the quiz as well, has anybody done that? I don't think so. So um, I, th I think we have to move to the last. And I don't know whether, I don't know whether the, um, Mr. Yemi is on the call. Because he's preparing for there is the UK version or uh, UK wide version for this kind of orientation and it's to date as well. And they are having it by 1 p.m. Anyway, uh, John can act in his stead. John is also that uh, shoe. So to run this program up and then to, to tell us about the is John still on the call? Hello, John. It's John. Hello. Oh, thank you. Um, it's Yemi that's supposed to run this up for us, but um, I think he's preparing for the program coming. So please, you will do the rounding up because you are in that position as well. And then if you have any information about the program, because that's why we heard this one between this time, and what is coming, so you can just share that in the next one minutes and then help us around it all. All right, thank you so much. And uh, sorry, my I didn't know my phone was not being charged until it just went off. It, it, the cable was there, but it wasn't plugged. Sorry, the... did never take light. Uh, all right, so as I was saying, <laughs> it was an eye opening event and. These are some of the things we need to keep hearing from time to time. Because every speaker from Olayinka to Vincent to Simple Team and to everyone has been wonderful. It was an event that you were looking forward to what the next speaker was saying. And I was now feeling like I was the less spoken like so that I was maybe like the foreigner, if I use that word, everyone kept referring to the little this guy without having a slide. I wasn't that professional. I need to come for training. 
Yes, so, and uh, it's also like an opportunity <laughs> to reach. So oh, no. reach out to every... Yeah, professional in your own way. Yeah, because I was also feeling like, man, this guy is the only... I'm asking, did Nepal take life to that? Your battery went dead. I know you also use glue. I wasn't network. doubting, but still, <laughs> even from the little I said, I didn't know it would have that lot of impact. Everyone has spoken out of the deep world, and I'm saying it ahead of time that I'll be sliding to everyone for networking. Not to come and pour out my problem anyway, but to come and share and see how everything would be. Even to Nana that said, we need to start coming up and networking and seeing how we'll build up. It was been, even for the host, the organizing, for the president, Aaron and everyone that built this thing, we want to appreciate for the privilege. I don't take it for granted that uh, coming in contact with Andrew and everyone that's spoke on this platform is really, 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 really a great thing. And also for the privilege to even share the vote of thanks is another event is also organized by a um, body that is passionate about the students too, which is also similar to this by the Nigerian, they call, it's the uh, name of the organization is Nigerian Students Union in UK. They are also doing an orientation by one PM. And that's why Andrew said they had to bring this one forward so that people that also want to benefit, no knowledge is wasted. You could still get one or two things if you have a chance to be able to attend that. It will also be a privilege. Like we all said, we all learn from each other. Uh, from where I come from, there is this proverb that they said, the two ants make the ants washing cleaner. And we wash our ants cleaner by using the two ants together. So thank you so much. And I yield the mic back to either Andrew or she. Thank you. Thanks for that. Yeah, the meeting is getting to an end gradually. Thank you very much for, we say thanks to all the speakers we've gained. One or two things have actually gained a lot, which have bent down and will be definitely useful. So it's time for a vote of thanks and closing prayer. Mr. Andrew. Um, I want to appreciate everybody. Like John has told us, um, to do so i also want to appreciate everyone every of our speaker taking from john himself to my wonderful sister that we share the same mentor and uh, that's why the passion has always been the same that's i've also it is also a mentor to me because i've learned a lot from him as well. uh, and, and also to me to me that the british that the britons have Called him his name in another uh, pronunciation. I appreciate uh, your uh, presence as well. Um, on to Olubinga, my wonderful brother, Mr. Olubinga Olubode. We always appreciate you. We thank you for always being there for us. And uh, uh, our twin brother, Mr. Nana, we appreciate you as well. And so, and um, in absence, we also appreciate Mr. Yemi. And uh, my wonderful Iron Lady, Amaka, we appreciate yourself, we appreciate your presence. And despite how busy she is, she still made it to this call and she stayed till the end. So we appreciate you. And lastly, but not the least, I appreciate my wonderful sister, Uluwashi, Rachel Omogbadebo, who has been a wonderful <laughs> presenter. So it's a uh, it's a wonderful good thing working with you, and I can see you have a wonderful gift that you just displayed today. So I believe God is taking you to places through that. And so and it shall be your purpose of being in the UK shall be achieved fully in the name of Jesus. So we call it um a day at this moment, and like John has said, if you are interested in the from program as well you can ask for the link of course we'll still drop the link as well so you which you can always join so we'll be there as well 
So probably um, do we still have Mr. Binga on the call to uh, help us with closing prayer? Oh, okay. All right. Let let let. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for yet another opportunity to be gathered. We know that a lot has been said today. We just ask that you help us all to put to practice all we've learned. We pray for everyone here, Lord, that mm -hmm. you bless them, even as we go into this weekend. Um, make a way for them. Anybody going through a challenge, make a way for them, Lord. We just pray blessing over everyone. And we also pray for our beloved country we as we approach the next election. Amen. Let your will be done in Nigeria. Amen. And let Nigeria shine again to your glory. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Amen. Thank, you. Amen. thank you so much. So thank you everyone for attending. And we'll continue to work together. So we wish us a happy, happy weekend and a blessed day ahead. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, my sister, my wonderful sister. Thank you for having us. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm,